I think what we've tried to do this year is get the balance right between how much we kick, how much we run with the ball, and how much we pass the ball. Um, and I think we've actually got that right so far. Um, probably didn't get it right in the two games that we lost. Um, so yeah, I think that's been a real stepping stone for us in, in terms of our evolution. And uh, talking about flying half play, it always helps, doesn't it, if you get a run of games in the same jersey in terms of the rhythm of the play and being up with that. How, how important has that been for you? Um, yeah, it's been good to have a, a run of games at 10. Um, but like I say to anyone who asks this question, because it comes up quite a lot, um, because I've been playing 10, 12, 13, I don't mind where I play. So wherever the team needs me, um, I'll do my most best wherever I am. Um, yeah, I, th I think as a player, you just want to play. So it doesn't matter if I'm playing on the wing or fullback or 13, um, I just want to play. And um, But you're right, I think when you get a run of games in a certain position, you do get comfortable. Um, and with people around you that you've been playing with quite a bit, you get to know each other a bit more. The nuances between you um, and the connections you make really helps. How important is it knowing that, you know, obviously George Ford came to the club and he's injured, but he'll be back at some point. Uh, how important is it knowing that he's there in the background? You know, if you keep on playing well, sending out that message that, you know, I'm an undroppable. <laughs> um, um, yeah. It's not really something I think about. Um, I just put my best foot forward every every week. Um, I try and put my best foot forward every week, and we'll see. Um, all I can do right now is focus on my performances week in, week out, um, and trying to keep that to the best of my ability. Obviously, goal kick is a big part of uh, your contribution to the team, especially now that people like Faf uh, an alternative <coughs> option have gone. Um, I think you're running at about 81 percent this season, which is similar to last, so pretty decent. And uh, I think you got every kick last time against Gloucester. Is that something that you're really pleased with, uh, the, the way that you're kicking at the moment? Uh, yeah, I think at 81 percent that's pretty good. But I've missed a lot of easy kicks, um, so that number can be a lot higher. Um, I'll always strive to get that number as high as possible. Um, but it's been going alright so far. But like I say, there's, there's been some easy ones I've let slide, um, which if I get those, then that number will be a lot higher. So I'll keep striving to get those those numbers up. With those easy ones, is it just a case of maybe just letting your concentration slip by half a percent? And Not too sure, really. Um, I think the easy kicks are probably the hardest kicks. Uh, the ones that everyone perceives to be easy um, are probably the hardest ones. Um, the hardest kicks where everyone thinks, oh, might get this, might not get it. That's the one where there's no real pressure, let's say, and those ones you probably tend to strike the best. Um, yeah, probably a little bit of lack of concentration. But again, I've, it's been going all right. Um, it's been going good. I'm happy with how I've been kicking. Um, not just goal kicking, but kicking in general. Um, it's been going all right, yeah. Okay. Um, Jordan Cal used to be kicking coach at the club. I, I'm a little bit off the pace in not knowing who his replacement was. Is, is, there, is there somebody that you work with on a regular basis? Uh, yeah, so we've got Warren, Warren Sprague. Uh, he's taken over the kicking, all the kicking around at the club. So that's kicking game, um, individual kicking, uh, and everything to do with kicking, really. But I know Sprague, yeah. Yes, Sprague, yeah, that's him. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's all from me. Um, yeah, that was you, Kieran. Thanks, John. Cheers. Hey, Rob, thank you for time. Uh, following <coughs> on from what John was asking about your own form, I remember asking Alex a few weeks back about whether there was anything that he said specifically to you over the summer that, that has kind of inspired you to this form. Is there anything that you personally changed, anything that you did maybe differently that has kind of led to a, a, a really good <coughs> form for you personally as well as obviously the, the, the team starting the season well? Um... I guess wanting to have the ball in my hands more, getting more touches. Um, I think in the past probably didn't get as many touches as I should have had. So it's something that we try and do, um, trying to be personally a bit more attacking at the line. Um, but again, I think the mindset we've had as a team allows that for me. I can't do my job if everyone else isn't doing theirs. Well, let's put it this way. If, if everyone else is in the right place, it makes my job a lot easier. Um, I've got a lot more options around me. Um, Whereas if I've only got one option, everyone knows what that option is. At the moment, we've got a lot of different options. Um, and that's just testament to the team. Uh, being in the right place has been at the right, at the right time and, and the communication being real high. 
obviously you played quite a bit at 13 last season. Uh, I, I've heard Alex on numerous occasions talking about how you playing at 13 perhaps gave you a different perspective of the field and, and, and of the attacking structures. And then you kind of used some of that at 10. I'm fairly sure I'm right in saying you, you've not, you haven't played 13 in your professional career before then. And what, what would you say you, you learned most from that time at 13? And, and, and what have you, what parts of your game have you used playing at 13, getting a, a different perspective in your form of a 10 this season? Um, yes, yeah, so I've never played 13 before. I've played a bit at 12, not a lot, um, a bit at 12. <clears throat> um, I've got a newfound respect for 13s because it's it's very difficult defending in the 13 channel in those wider channels. Um, that's something that I learned quite quickly. Um, but just kind of appreciating how much a 13 can help a 10 and how much a 10 can help a 13, just kind of vice versa. Um, with communication, that's a really big one and that's something that we've been talking about a lot. The 13 is kind of the, the eyes for the 10 a lot of the time because he's in those wider channels, the 10s are normally looking in. Um, so yeah, just kind of, I know now what, I appreciate now what a good 13 can give to a 10. Um, and if I'm a 13, I know what a 10 wants. Um, so I can give them that too. How did that kind of conversation come about? Was it something that uh, Alex and the coaching staff approached you saying with obviously AJ at the club last season that they wanted to see how you went at 13? Or was it something that was kind of a joint conversation in terms of they discussed about the possibility and you said actually let, 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 let's let, let's give it a go let, let's see how how i go at 13. yeah i think it's a bit of both um i think i mean the second one you just said i think we sat down and and i possibly wasn't happy with it, a lot of the game time i was getting um and they said well there's a position that we think could work for you and and i said happy days let's go As, like i said i just want to play um and and help the team wherever i can um and i took that head on and and I really enjoy it, to be fair. I really enjoy playing at 13. Obviously, George, as John mentioned, came in uh, over the summer. What have you learned? Obviously, a vastly experienced both premiership player and 75 caps or something for, for England. What, what have you learned from George in his first few months at the club? And how, <coughs> how great is that for both of you to be able to feed off each other? Because you're a vastly experienced player as well. You're, you're similar ages in terms of your late 20s. So presumably, both of you can learn a lot off each other? Yeah, I think I've always had really good working relationships with, with the other 10s in my team. Myself and AJ were really good mates, um, got along really well. So we bounced off each other quite a bit. And, and even with George coming in now, um, he's already had an effect on the team. I think the way we've played um, could be down to something he said early in the season um, with, with the backs getting more touches, um, being more involved, taking a little bit more responsibility. Um, so yeah, I think he's been really good when he speaks. People listen, like you say, he's he's a guy who's played a lot of games in the Prem, a lot of test matches. So when he does speak, people listen. Um, I think he's been really good around the place, um, especially even with the youngsters, with Tom Curtis and Kieran. I think he's put some time in with them and we've seen how they've come on. Um, Kieran had a great game this past weekend. Tom's been playing really well, training really well. Um, yeah, I think I think it's it's good. It's really healthy. There's no, yeah, it's really healthy. Big an impact have those new signs made. Obviously, George hasn't played yet because of injury, but has, has, has already had an impact off the field. Johnny Hill, Tommy Flaherty have, have, have had a really good start to their cell careers. How much of a, I suppose, a bit of a, a lift, new blood, fresh <coughs> faces? How big a, a boost has that been this season? Yeah, I think so. It's always nice getting people to come in from, from different places, having a different perspective. Um, and I think you can see the energy they've brought. It's just new energy. Um, things tend to get stale after a while. Um, so yeah, when you get these new players in, like Tom, Fla Tom Flaherty has been brilliant for us, hasn't he? Um, so has Johnny. Um, just the energy they bring around the place and, and having a different perspective of, of how they see the game might not be the same as how we see the game and then you kind of feed off each other. Um, so I think it's been really good. The, the new guys who've come in have made a real difference to our, to our team. You've signed through until 2025. I think obviously your brother is in, in brilliant news for the club of signing through to 2026. Um, it, it's a big statement of intent, especially with all the salary caps and stuff and, and potentially the, the, the offers of, 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 of hugely lucrative deals abroad. It, it, it says a lot about where Stale are on the field, but also how much does it say off the field? Because I remember 
when you and, and Jean Luc were over during your loan spells back in 2018 19, there was mm. a game that really stood out to me when we played Saracens at home. Yep. It was one of your last games, it may have even been in your last yeah, game. Yeah. And just the celebration <clears throat> and the way in which so quickly you could see that you and Jean Luc, despite the fact that you were only there for at the club that season for a short period, how quickly you had bought in. But how much does it say about the club? The, the culture, the environment at the club that Steve Diamond built, and then Alex has has continued. How how big is that for you and for your brothers? And, and how good of a picture does it paint for Sale that not only are the club performing well on the field, but off the field, it's it's a really great place to be. Yeah, I think you want people who want to be here. Um, the culture is great, and that, and that kind of just shows how the people we've kept, obviously Dan and Jell, massive massive signings or, or massive keeps. Um, I think we're all comfortable, we're all settled. I think we, we've made this place our home. Um, the three of us have all got married whilst we were here, all had kids whilst we were here, all bought houses whilst we were here. So we've really bought in and, and settled in and, and, love, and love this place. Um, I think the teammates that we have around us are brilliant. Um, we've made some really good connections off the field. Um, yeah, I, I, I think if it weren't for that, I think it could have been a different conversation. Um, but the fact that we really love this place and, and we've been enjoying the way we've been going, not only on the field, but off the field, um, just made it, I think, that much easier to stay on. Yeah, I was going to ask, how big a factor is that? Because, for for example, there's a lot of talk, as there kind of usually is, about Dan and, and Jean-Luc and the lucrative offers that would have most definitely been on the table from French clubs and Japanese clubs at a time where... In the Premiership, the cap is, is is quite tight at the moment. How big a factor was that for you and, and for Dan and Jean-Luc in terms of making that decision, thinking, yes, there's potentially more money on offer elsewhere, but you can't you can't replace, you can't replicate the feeling you get, the the, the, the comfortable nature of your lives, <clears throat> the enjoyment you and your families have. How how significant was that? Was that arguably maybe like the biggest factor in in, in making that decision to sign a new deal? I think so. I'd say so. I think us three staying together is quite massive. It's pretty special. Um, <clears throat> I think being able to see each other every day is very special. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think that was probably one of the biggest, bigger factors because, like you say, there would have been big offers. I'm not. I'm not sure on the particulars. I really don't. Um, but I think that would have been a very big factor. Uh, having to possibly split up, I think, would have been tough. Um, so yeah, I think a huge factor was was us being together um, for another three, two, three years. Um, yeah, everyone always goes on about how or ask how special it is to play with your brothers, uh, which is quite cool. I mean, that's special, but it's more seeing them day in, day out, which is which is really cool and something that we'll probably miss when we do eventually go our separate ways because there will be a time where we will have to go our separate ways. Just one final one from me. Alex has said that your dad kind of comes over quite a lot, um, and but but has taken kind of a bit of a more of a backseat role now, rather than kind of getting involved in any sort of like coaching consultancy. Is it is it a bit of a different dynamic now between yourself, Dan, and Jean Luc, and your dad? Because obviously he was your coach at the start. So how yeah. different uh, a dynamic is it? Kind of perhaps good for the personal relationship that he's perhaps not your coach every single day telling you what you're doing wrong and, and what you're doing right. Is it, is it how big a change is that, has that been in the, the dynamic? Um, I, think, I don't think too big, to be fair. I think even when he was coaching us, it was, it was professional at the club and then at home, it's like every other day. Um, and I think that's what it's like now anyway. Um, he'll always give feedback on, on, on our games and, and how we went. It's generally quite positive. Um, uh, but yeah, I think probably not as much uh, rugby chat, um, but there's still that element. Um, but yeah, when he was coaching us, it was always professional, always business. And then as soon as you leave, it's, I mean, he's our father and we're his son, so it'll be normal at home. Um, yeah. That's all for me. Cheers, Rob. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Kieran. No worries. Yeah.